Page objects are one of my favorite concepts in automated testing, as they allow you to add semantics to your test scripts. Instead of an assortment of selectors and abstract commands, you can define names, steps, and elements that directly relate to your site's structure and functionality. This helps you write tests that are more maintainable and understandable. It also allows for consolidation of element selectors into common files, which is especially useful when testing a component used across multiple page flows. The page object pattern is powerful, but it's also complex. Before diving into that complexity, I want to cover a simpler way to achieve a similar effect. The element command provides a lightweight way to move the complex element selectors out of your page actions, allowing for more readable test steps. In all of our tests so far, we've passed the element selector directly to each command. While this works, it's repetitive and can be difficult to read. It's also annoying to write. The element command fixes that. It allows us to define an element once, then call actions directly on it again and again. To use the command, pass in an element selector and store the returned result to a variable. From there, use the stored reference to take actions, such as setting the element's value or checking its state. We'll start off in our cart.js file by modifying the last test of the suite. Instead of defining thank you as a selector to pass to your command, we're going to call browser.element and store the element reference returned. Then we'll update the two instances where thank you is referenced, moving the variable usage from inside the command to where the browser object is. Instead of saying browser wait for exist thank you, it becomes thank you wait for exist. A simple change, but nice. What about the close button? While we could wrap browser element around it, it actually makes the test more verbose. Thankfully, WebDriverIO introduced the concept of dollar sign functions as a shortcut for browser element. The first of the two functions, the single dollar sign, is a direct match with browser element. It returns a reference to the first element that matches the selector you provide. If you've worked in jQuery before, this may look familiar. The other function is the double dollar sign. It's very similar, but it returns all the elements found that match. This matches up with the browser elements command. One difference to be aware of is that it will always return an array, even if only one element was found. Therefore, you must always use the array index or a loop if you need to access the elements inside. Back in the cart file, I'll replace my thank you element with the dollar sign. I'll also go ahead and change the close button click action to use the dollar sign as well. Even though we're only referencing this element once, I prefer this style of writing tests. Let's run our tests and make sure they work. While our test suite is running, it's worth noting that we are able to define our element before it even exists on the page. In my experience, this isn't a bulletproof way to do things, but it is an option when the time is right. Just be careful when trying to take actions on that element as it may not return the results you were expecting. Currently, at the top of our file, we define two selectors for the quantity input and buy now button. This is a great chance to use our element command. Because these variables are declared before the page is loaded, we could easily get ourselves in trouble if we used the element command right away. Instead, we're going to take advantage of a concept known as getters in JavaScript to write our element code here, but delay running it until we're in our test. To start off, we're going to create a cart object. This is going to store our element references. Next, we'll use the get keyword to signify we want to define a getter. A getter is a method that gets the value of a specific property. Unlike a static variable definition, a getter works by running and returning the result of the defined function. What's nice about getters is that you reference them just like any other variable. This helps keep the code a bit cleaner. Back in our file, after our get keyword, we'll pass in the name we want to use as the variable, then the function we want to run when that variable's value is requested. Inside the function, we'll return the element reference using the selector we already have available. We'll do the same thing for the quantity input. With our object and getters defined, we can now put it to use. Inside the first test, we'll change browser is enabled button to be cart button is enabled. This would be similar to declaring browser element button is enabled, just shorter. We can do the same thing with the quantity input, changing it to cart quantity set value. And one more time with a cart button. 
Continuing through updating our test, everything is about the same. In this test, similar to the one we looked at first, we reference the thank you element again. Let's take a moment to move this to our cart object. With that defined, let's update the two thank you tests. The final two tests we have are again simple updates. That finishes it for our changes. Let's save the file and run the tests. This is more of a cosmetic update than a functional one, as WebDriver IO is taking the same actions in our test. We've simply updated how we reference the page element. As expected, all our tests still pass. The element command, along with the dollar sign shortcuts, are a handy tool to have in your back pocket. They can help write clearer, more concise tests without too much overhead. Next, we'll jump into page objects looking at how we can formalize the approach we outlined in this video. Two quick footnotes having to do with WebDriverIO version compatibility. Since the dollar sign function was introduced in version 4.4, and this video course started before that version was released, I needed to update my local copy of WebDriverIO. You may not need to do this if you recently started the course. Also, in earlier versions of the WebDriverIO Mocha framework service, there was a bug with the wait until command and browser element. This has been fixed since then. If you run across an error in this exercise saying that cart button get text isn't a function, you may need to update your version. To upgrade your dependencies, simply run npm install save dev and pass in the names of the packages you want to update, along with the latest tag. npm will then run the install script to grab the latest versions and update your package.json file for you.